In this video, we are going to learn how to enhance an image quality using custom deep learning model. You can also follow our video in which we have described how to enhance the image quality using pre-trained model. For that, you can click the icon above or the link in the description. Now, first we need to make sure that we have OpenCV installed in our system. So, as of now, we are using 4.6.0 version for this experiment. The next thing we need to ensure is that we have data set in which we are going to train our deep learning model. For that purpose, we are using our another NM face data set. This data set contains a lot of anime images containing faces. So in order to download the data set, you need to do following step. You need to have a file name as Kaggle JSON in your home directory under .kaggle folder with specific permission. This contains the authentication which you are going to use in order to download the data set from Kaggle. This is pretty standard. You can just follow the Kaggle documentation in which they have mentioned how to download the data set. After you have that Kaggle JSON in your home directory, you just use the Kaggle dataset download command to download data set. Then we are going to unzip the data set here. So then we are just going to iterate over the files that we have. And as you can see, we have roughly around 92,000 samples in this data set. Now this data set, if we look at some of the samples, you see, you will see like this is how they look like. Now another thing that I want to emphasize on, we need to have our training data set ready for our training to perform on. By that I mean is that you need to have down sample images and the original images. So what do you mean by original and down sample images? So we have perfect like original samples as mentioned above in the data set, right? Which our which our our high definition images. So now the high definition images will act our as our target. And then we are going to down sample it. By down sample, I mean is we are going to decrease its resolution, and we increase and we'll use this as our x variable. So our x is low resolution images, and we are trying to learn a function or fn such that the target is our high resolution images. So this is our deep learning model. This is our X, this is our Y, and this is our deep learning model. You can use this code to generate down sample images. Uh, you only need this. So we, we are just going to use the CV2 resize function to downscale the original image for to a scale of 0 0.4. It means we are, we are dividing it by 2.5 something. So now, uh, once we have our data set ready, we, as you can see that this is our original image and this is down sample image. You can pretty much see the difference. Then we are going to iterate over the whole uh, training data set and we, we are going to generate another directory which contain down sample images here. So let's discuss the modeling part. So for modeling, we are using a GAN network here. So let's discuss the internal architecture of the GAN. So we are going to use three building block. The first one is generator. Discriminator. And the third one is VGG. This is a pre-trained model. I'm going to explain why you're using it. So, so the generator goal is to generate high resolution image from low resolution sample. So we are going to feed our low resolution image that we have generated earlier to generator. It's going to generate high resolution images. Now, the discriminator goal is to distinguish whether the generated images from the generator 
are real from a generator are real or fake right so we are going to pass two images one is generated images high resolution and the one is the original images so distinguish discriminator goal is simple to classify the generated images as fake and to classify the original images as real so this is its loss function we are going to see that later in the code also but this is loss function whereas the generator loss function is it has three loss function it whereas discriminator has only one loss function so the generator loss function is is it able to fool discriminator fool discriminator if yes the loss will be low if no the loss will be high the second one is the msc or mean square error of loss between the generated high resolution images and the actual original one because this image must have a original high resolution image for which is trying to run the mapping to and the third one is that's where vgg come into picture so vgg is not whole vgg we have clipped the last layer and we are going to use the vgg to generate the features by that i mean is we are going to pass the high resolution generated image to vgg it is going to generate some features out of it if we have clipped some layers like last three layers so the intermediate output is going to generate so suppose it the intermediate output is n1 and then we are going to pass the original image to vgg and generate the intermediate output suppose it is no so the msc between mean squared error between the original and the generated vgg features it's also the third loss function so the generator job is a little tougher it's trying to minimize all the three losses whereas the discriminator job is to classify real as real and fake as fake so let's discuss generator so generator code can be described as some of the building blocks so let's discuss one of the building blocks okay which is sub pixel contour so all you need to know in this is that we are using a tn nn depth to space function whose job is to convert a hwc or height width channel images into h time r w time r c divided by r square whereas r is a sampling factor that's it okay now let's see why we did that what we did so now this is our generator code this is a whole generator code let's dive into it so now the generator code is accepting as an input suppose this is input it is fed to a convolution block which is here now we are using three blocks now let's see that's a residual block but residual blocks are also called as skip block it means we can completely skip block without damaging the input and you will see why so it's output it feed to another convolution block and then there is a layer which is intermediate layer which is called as l and then another convolution block so there is also a skip connection from here to here it means it can learn both ways it can learn this mapping this mapping or it can just skip this complete block on its own and just learn the previous layer mapping if it is finding that this is not relevant it can just completely skip that and we have like many layers like this we have roughly around 3 layers like this so this is called residual block in which it is it it has a mechanism to learn from past self or it can learn from the intermediate value as well after that after these three blocks we have this uh sub pixel to the sub pixel to the though these are nothing these are up sampling vector but that i mean is they are increasing the 
image size so as you noted that we have told that we are going to increase the size by four times so this layer is increasing the image size by two times this is again increasing by two times so if we have applied another layer like this it would have increased by two times as well which is two multiplied by two multiplied by two which is eight times so these are nothing these are just upscaling the image dimension mean, means it is increasing the resolution so we are learning in the lower dimension which is lower resolution image when the resolution is original the mapping between low resolution to high resolution image and later we are just learning up sampling function so all the major processing is happening in lower dimensional space that's why it is cost efficient we are going to look into later uh, i'm going to mention uh, one of the research paper on which this is based in which they have described why this is important why you know generating features or doing most of processing in low resolution images is better as compared to high dimensional space so discriminator discriminator's job is pretty simple as we have discussed it earlier so its architecture is also similar it contains series of convolution blocks you can see there is a convolution block series of convolution block and in last we have a softmax which is just telling whether it's a one or zero so it's pretty straightforward network just apply a series of convolution block use a different activation use a batch normalization and you have your job done now the vgg now vgg as you can see right as i mentioned above we are not using complete vgg we are only using first 17 layers so we pulled the vgg pre-trained model we clipped last layer by that i mean we just pulled first 17 layers and make it a model it's simple so now let's discuss about hyperparameters or oh, let's let's train the model so now uh, for training the model we have all the building blocks ready by that i mean we have vgg we have generator we have discriminator so we are just going to do a simple thing we are just going to initialize our hyperparameter that means learning rate number of epo batch size etc etc and then we are going to create a data set or tensorflow data set iterator on the image directory that lower resolution image is a data set lr high resolution as data set hr okay this is our x and y this is pretty straightforward code so now one way what we are going to do is we are going to initialize our models so we have initialized all the three generator discriminator and vgg models here we have defined the optimization function as well so what you have noticed is we have two optimizers for generator we are going to see why now as i mentioned earlier our generator job is a little bit harder as compared to discriminator it has to learn three functions or loss function whereas our discriminator has to learn only one function also it's a tougher model because all discriminator is doing is learn a simple mapping where the output is one or zero whereas a generator is learning many many pixel values so uh, considering our image is 256 by 256 again assuming and we are converting into 1024 by upsampling of 4 to 1024 so you can see how many things it's learning just multiply to 256 by 256 1024 by 24 and take a difference this many values it is trying to learn so it's job is a little bit harder so we'll give it a head start by head start in my mean is we are going to not learn discriminator in starting we are only going to learn the mapping between lower resolution to high resolution image in form of generator only in the starting so we have defined how many epo we want to do this so uh, we iterate our data set to a starting number of epo 
our loss function is simple just try to learn you know uh, the difference between the actual prediction which is these and the original values which is high resolution original and high resolution generated pixel values so this is our loss function and it will try to learn that and in last we at each epo also we are going to see how our generation look like so at the start of each epo we are going to save one image so let's see in the bottom how our resolution look like so as you can see with each epo the loss is actually decreasing this is msc loss between original generation images so here is the output now as you can see like initially this image was not at all an image then it somewhat look like an image it's getting better better and better with each epo so now our initialization is done now it's time for final training so this is our function for final training let me explain so um we have defined the number of epos we have the data set we iterate over it so we pass the low resolution image generated high resolution image we pass this high resolution image generated high resolution image to discriminator and see it's classify them as real or fake we pass the original images to discriminator and see if it's classify them as real or fake we pass these fake and original images to vgg and generate the feature vector this all we have discussed now what our discriminator loss is is it able to classify fake as fake or it is classifying them as a real if it is classifying them as a real the loss will be high here if it is classifying fake as fake the loss will be low now is it classifying real as real if yes loss will be low if it's classifying real as fake loss will be high but this is what these function are doing right now generator loss is it able to fool gen like discriminator yes loss will be low no loss will be high what's the msc between fake images and generated images sorry uh, real images and fake images low means if msc is low the loss will be low if msc high loss will be high difference between fake features vgg features and real vgg features again a similar terminology right and this is how we are training our generator and discriminator so now let's see how our output look like so uh, as you can see as we started our training our output was pretty bad as training moves on it improves now as you can see there's a jump from 1 to 10 because we haven't printed all the like 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 like training epos but this is how it is so up to 10th epo the output is much better and up to 19th epo these initial like these blurry things are most of the time vanished so if we have continued our training for larger it will be exactly not exactly like close to the original image so this is our deep learning model or custom deep learning model for enhancement of images